I thought I'd make a second distance tutorial video just to share some tips if you're new to the game. So in this video, I'll be talking about the in-game menu briefly, um, my in-game settings and distance keybinds, how best to ceiling jump, accessing community tracks and tips on grip flight. Uh, I'm going to say straight up that if you're new to the game, play on controller instead of keyboard. I've been playing this game since it was in beta and I basically had issues playing on keyboard at a higher level. Uh, doing the more advanced gameplay and moving towards trying to get a top 10 time or even world records on tracks is difficult on my keybinds. Some high level players use the default keybinds um, set in the game, however most do seem to use controller. If you're still interested about my keybinds though, and why I chose them, uh, feel free to stick around. So um, we have the menu. So here's a quick overview of the menu. Some of these items I found a little bit confusing when I first started, so I thought it'd be good just to kind of go through them. Campaign, um, this is basically the main story mode. So your times won't really matter. It's more of a kind of like immersive experience. Arcade, um, this is where you can go through and speed run certain tracks. The medals are bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. Uh, the top 1,000 times will show on the leaderboard as well. Um, for some reason, my game has glitched and doesn't show all my medals, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, basically under sprint, you have the main bulk of the tracks. Uh, the campaign levels are also present here under the various headings. So I think that's Adventure, Lost Echoes, and Nexus. Uh, Legacy shows the original tracks made in the beta. Um, Workshop shows tracks made by the community, which is here at the bottom. So that's Sprint. Challenge, um, so they're tracks that you have to complete in one session. If you die, you have to start from the beginning. Uh, some of these are quite tough, actually. Um, that's challenge. Stunt, so stunt is a free for all space where the more tricks you do, the higher the score you get. Um, this is kind of tricky to do as a beginner, so I'd recommend getting used to the game before you try this out. That's stunt. And then Track Mogrify is an auto-generated track based on what you write in the box. So some of these are quite cool. You can write kind of whatever you want, like Blue Lightning, something cool. Any random selection of words, and it basically makes a track based on your words. Cool. Next is Multiplayer. Um, this is where you can squad up with other players uh, to play some games. Um, if you click on Browse and then... Uh, go to the yeah go to the workshop mix unofficial server you'll be taken through the top rated tracks in the community i think the other server so this competitive unofficial server is something similar as well um so yeah pretty cool to check out um that's the uh, multiplayer okay then we've got level editor so this is where you can make your own levels in the game i've never actually really got into this i think i made one track um, and there are some tutorials available for other members of the community of how to use this, but that's the level editor. If you want to come out of this, you just need to go to File and Quit to Main Menu. And then we have Workshop. Uh, so this is where you can download tracks. I'll explain a bit more about this uh, a bit later, but this is where you can kind of download all the community tracks. Uh, garage, so this is where you can customize your vehicle, see stats, and customize um, the menu level, like the starting screen as well, which is kind of cool. And there are some workshop items that you can get from the community as well. That's Garage. And then that leads us on to options and in-game settings. So in terms of changing in-game settings, a lot of it is down to personal preference. The main ones I would check out are in the control settings. So, yep, so options, then controls. So steering sensitivity and the flight sensitivity controls are something I would consider changing, especially if you've decided to stay on keyboard. I've turned them up to a certain degree as I think it makes the game more responsive. So that's kind of these three here. Um, 
Flight stabilization is useful in general, as I found it helps control flying. So that's this toggle here. Um, I personally find having it off a bit strange. I think this should be on as default in your settings. And then you've got flight landing assist. Uh, this can be useful, but you may find this annoying as you progress in the game. This setting, what it basically does is assist you in landing onto a surface when you get close to it. Um, so yeah, it, it can be useful, but uh, you might actually find it annoying. So I've actually got it turned off. Uh, the others aren't as important, I don't think. And then, yeah, I'll just show you quickly how I've set up my, in, my keybinds quickly. Again, I would recommend you stick to the default keybinds on keyboard or even make the switch to controller. Uh, so this is kind of my basic controls. Then I've got my flight controls, camera controls, which I do use a little bit, uh, which I have used a little bit and then just some random menu controls that I've changed. So yeah, and then just one more tip. If you've been experiencing screen tearing in game, try toggling the V-Sync option to see if that helps. So that's in graphics, it's here. Just switch it to enabled or disabled. I found that it's really helped me. I, I mean, I actually have AMD FreeSync monitors, so I've set up a thing in my NVIDIA settings to make free sync and v sync work kind of together um even though i have a N nvidia graphics card uh there are tutorials online on how to do that and stuff but i found for whatever reason i have to enable v sync in the game um, otherwise i get like terrible screen tearing cool uh, okay so i'm just going to open up a stunt level quickly just to show a couple of things i'll go into neon park uh, so yeah, this is basically just to go through my keybinds, um, if you might find it interesting. Uh, so my keybinds are located at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, I found the default keybinds really difficult to get the hang of, so I basically chose something different. Uh, I've got... So X, yep, is literally boost. Um, then... Yeah, I basically had this on my middle finger, as I thought I'd be, I'd be using it the most. Z is for grip. Um, so yeah, I've got it right next to my middle finger. Thought I'd be able to kind of uh, use it quite easily. Um, so you've got X, you've got Z. C and V are my pitch keys. So pitch forwards and backwards whilst in the air. So if I'm especially grip flighting, I need to pitch forwards and backwards. Uh, when I'm on the ground, it looks like that. That's C, that's V. Those are my pitch keys. I mainly use that for, um, for grip flight anyway. Um, space jump for space space jump space bar for jump and to also open wings some people actually have these on different keys um if they're on keyboard so they've set the jump key to something and then the flight key to something different i've just always been used to having it the same so yeah space bar for jump and then also to open wings when i'm in the air arrow keys for movement on the road um and also when flying so just so you know um you don't have to press forwards whilst holding boost. Holding forwards adds literally no extra speed. So when you're going along, don't think you have to be holding kind of the up, the up key or the arrow key um, and boost. Literally just hold boost and that's it. Um, yeah, so that's that. Obviously down arrow is break. Uh, and then, so this is the weird one. For air rolls, I chose the left control and the zero on my numpad. So basically using my little fingers or pinkies. Um, I thought this made sense as it felt comfortable and easier for my mind to figure out. So yeah, they're basically kind of on my little fingers. Uh, but just, so this is the problem I ran into. Unfortunately, at the higher levels of gameplay, so for example, when doing skips off track, um, switching between flight and grip flight quickly is very tricky with a setup. So I'll just show you quickly what I mean. So I'm in the air, I need to switch to grip flight. I need to switch back to flying. I need to switch to grip flight back to flying this is really hard uh using my little fingers and that's what you really need to do when you're doing off um off track skips and when you're doing kind of the more advanced gameplay and i just basically found it really difficult um it's also hard to be kind of fully accurate when using your pinkies to try and maneuver around so this is in grip flight so if i take off and get going sorry i'll, I'll do that again if I get going here, kind of making these minor adjustments with my little fingers is kind of, it's a bit annoying as well. So that's another thing that's kind of held me back. Um, 
I'll just land here quickly. So yeah, again, try the default keybinds or or switch to controller. That's my recommendation. Um, so yeah, I basically just got kind of stubborn with my setup and persevered. Um, however, I eventually hit a wall where I couldn't improve further at the game. So I basically got to like kind of a top 100 player. Uh, I couldn't get any better than that. So I just kind of left it. So that's kind of everything about my keybinds. Next, I'm going to move on to ceiling jumping. So this is in Monolith I'm going to use. So this is the Legacy uh, Tracks Monolith, just because this is a really good example of ceiling jumping. So basically, um, I'm going to use a few jumps in a row, but this was the first jump I had issues with uh, when the first game out and beat the, the when the game first came out on beta. Basically, if you're having issues ceiling jumping, try to hold down the right or left um, air roll key, whichever one you prefer, before making the jump. So if you make if you jump then air roll, you'll likely be too late to do a proper spin to make it onto the track. Um, so that's especially true on this track. So. Yeah, it's basically drive up to it, hold either the right or left air roll down whilst driving normally, um, then jump. You, you'll find it's just, uh, otherwise it's just really difficult. Um, so I'll just kind of get into this. I'll kind of go along the track a bit. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see how it looks on my keybinds that are coming through in the input screen. So even on this one, if you're finding it difficult, Hold down the air roll first. Again here, air roll first. And then I didn't actually need to jump there, but... So here, air roll, then jump. Air roll, then jump. Air roll, then jump. And then this one, these ones especially with the lasers are really difficult. Air roll, then jump. And then die. But you get the idea. So... Yeah, that's what I'd recommend for that. Uh, it's something that I really struggle with. I was like, I don't know how the hell to do this. So again, I just thought I'd kind of share that. So that's ceiling jumping. Now it's, I was gonna just go over kind of the workshop tracks quickly. So if you're unaware, there's a whole catalog of community distance tracks made by people other than the devs. There are some really cool tracks to try out if you look around. Um, so I'll download one as an example. Uh, so you basically want to go into workshop, visit workshop. Uh, you can search for certain tracks uh, in the community here in the, in the search box. Scroll down, choose anything. So like Vapor, I've already downloaded. So most subscribed, let's try, I don't know, most popular industrial living. Click into it, click the green cross or the subscribe button. And then that's marked it. And then when you go to the top of the screen, which is click here to return to the game, you want to select OK for this option. And then it will basically download it into your library. So then it will show kind of an orange blob where you need to go for the track. So this is Arcade, uh, Sprint, and then in the workshop. And then it's here at the top left. And then if you can't find it in this initial screen, you can go to Advanced in the bottom left and search all your tracks um, for the track you just downloaded. So yeah, community tracks, loads of really cool ones. Um, that's just a quick one on those. So next is Grip Flight. So this is kind of a more advanced racing thing, uh, but I'll just show you what Grip Flight is. And we're gonna go into, where is it? Uh, Nightmare Fuel and Zenith, that's the track that basically teaches you how to do it. So when the beta came out originally, they didn't have a track to teach uh, Grip Flight in, but now it's actually inbuilt into one of the official tracks, which is really cool. So what is Grip Flight? So it's basically, essentially, it's essentially, yeah, flying without wings. Um, grip Flight is actually faster than normal flight, so that's why a lot of people use it, uh, but quite difficult to get the hangover. So yeah, this track called Zenith, it's under the Nightmare Fuel tab. It's designed to help you out with the process step by step. Uh, you can also maybe try this out in one of the stunt levels too, uh, if you want an open space to fly around in. So it's literally just kind of following this level, uh, which I'll do in a second. Um, you will also need to use Grip Flight when flying is disabled in some of the harder tracks. Um, 
And then it's also really common to switch between flying and grip flight quickly when doing off track skips. So that's the thing I said I was kind of struggling with um, earlier. Uh, so if I resume, you'll see that the instructions pop up on the screen. So you need to go along here. So it's saying hold grip to fly without wings. So it's just saying hold Z. So I already know how to maneuver to get to it, but that's kind of the first one. And then here it's saying flip upside down and hold grip. This took me a while to get the hang of, but I eventually got it. So that will take probably a few tries if you're new to the game. And then this is saying about how you control it with thrusters. So I haven't played the game for a little bit, so I might be a bit rusty at this, but essentially just kind of doing that until you get through. So the level kind of takes you on and it continues uh, further. Uh, it's a really good track to kind of hone your skill. Um, yeah, so that's super useful. Okay. Um, so the last thing is if you have any general questions, I would join the Distance Discord as I find it's a bit better to chat there rather than the Steam community. Uh, new tracks are also released there fairly often, uh, which you can check out. In the description of this video, I've linked a few bits uh, of information you, information that you might find useful. So the Discord, um, how to get diamond in certain tracks from California, um, one of the admins, which I think is really good. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, hope this was useful. Again, it's more of a beginner's guide. So if you're already playing the game a lot, you probably won't have learned much here. Um, but if you're brand new to the game, I uh, really hope you enjoy it. Cheers.